Welcome back to Loma for Classic. And if you're new to my channel, I hope you stick around and consider subscribing. I put new videos every week, usually on some Jaguar and Classic car related content. But today we're in something a little different again. This is my wife's 2006 supercharged Range Rover that we picked up just a couple days ago. In the previous video, I introduced the car. We just gotten it then less than 24 hours ago. And yeah, we just went through exactly what it looks like when we got it. Nothing has really changed since then. So this is part two of that video, but some things are gonna change in this video. Uh, we're actually gonna give it the first wash and see what it looks like underneath all that dirt. Cause I think it hasn't been washed in at least a year. It's, it's really, really filthy. So it's gonna be nice to see what the paint looks like underneath all of that. Also, as promised, we're gonna go through and see basically what is wrong with this car, the faults it has. I mean, there is a reason that it is a, you know, a cheap old Range Rover. There will be things wrong with it. However, I don't think it will be as bad as you probably think it is. We're also gonna go through really what the plan is. Uh, as you know, if you follow the channel or you might not know if you're new, everything I do on this channel, I do all the work myself, all the filming, you know, everything myself. So, um, you know, all the service work and everything needs to be done on this car, I will do except uh, one thing. Uh, we're gonna get new tires that will be done by a tire shop. And we're also gonna get an alignment because um, uh, the steering wheel is a little off center. And also one of the tires in the rear is unevenly wore. So we're gonna get a full alignment for this car before we put new tires on it. So I thought we'd go outside, we'd have a look at it, uh, give it a wash, see what it looks like afterwards. And then we'll go through everything that's wrong with this old Range Rover. Even though all the snow is gone from the last video, it's still really, really cold outside. It's just pretty much just one degree above freezing. So it'll be a very, very quick wash, not like a detail or anything, just to get all the story off to you what it looks like. And then once it's warmer outside, we'll definitely go through and detail this car, see how nice we can get it looking. But now it's just about getting all this dirt off and seeing what's underneath it. A really quick wash later and it looks a lot nicer. I don't think it's going to show up that well on camera just because it's a great car on a great miserable day, but it does look a lot nicer. And the best part is I didn't find any major flaws in the paint that I didn't see before. There were no scratches or anything. However, I did notice one thing that a Range Rover is absolutely huge when you have to wash it. It is a massive, massive car. I mean, every door is just huge. Uh, compared to all the classic Jags I usually wash, this thing is massive. I also did not get to the roof. I will need some type of stool or something to reach that because it's uh, it's really high up. Even if I'm pretty tall, that's, that is high up. I uh, did notice a few, of course, you know, uh, little marks up here on the bumper. We got some, um, it's not that bad, but like some stone chips, of course, but that is to be expected with the age and mileage. So nothing really that surprised me at all. Did not do the wheels for a couple of reasons. Um, I was a wheel cleaner. As you see, they're really, really dirty. And also I've noticed that the previous owner was probably not a fan of parking or did not know how to park because every single wheel is curbed. I have personally never curbed a wheel. I mean, I've hit a tire on a curb. I've never made a mark on a alloy wheel. And every single one is curved. I mean, this is the worst one. Just, I mean, okay, it's actually not that deep. So I think all of this can be restored. But how do you manage to curb every single wheel on a vehicle? So let's start with that. That is something that is wrong with the car, at least, or that is embarrassing. When you drive a car like this, which looks really nice, you don't want every single wheel to look curved because at least where I live, if you show up in a big old Range Rover, people are gonna look at you. They're not that common here. Um, not that many cars in this size here. Uh, SUVs and things here are a lot smaller. I mean, sort of the biggest SUVs we see are the, the Volvo XC90 SUV. So uh, a big four x four like this is a massive car and people are probably gonna look at it and they're gonna look at those wheels and just think, that person cannot park. So uh, we're gonna have to do something about this. The tires on the car are not the best either. They're uh, not really a major name brand. And also we got some wear here on the back. This definitely needs an alignment. So I've already booked it in for an alignment. It's gonna go in next week. Looking back here, we have some parking damage as well. I think it is we got, you know, some scratches on the back bumper here and here. Those are some blue stuff, so maybe they hit a blue car or something. I do not know. 
I don't really know how else you would get these scrapes here. You know, on a normal vehicle, I'd say that all of this is from maybe a dog getting in and out of the back or, you know, loading stuff. But on a Range Rover, this, you know, the tailgate folds down, so it covers that. So I think that has to be parking damage or something like that. But uh, there are no major cracks or anything. It would need to be painted, but that can definitely be done when this is painted because here is the sort of major body work on this car this big dent over here it looks like you know a big hit here somehow and then a tiny little scrape over there i think so that will have to be pulled out and you know fixed and then they'll probably can paint it from this line down which is a good thing so i think the whole panel has to be painted and then they can probably do the back bumper at the same time so that is um, something that will be done in the future, not right away. We're going to wait to see um, how this thing is to drive, because the whole car is, of course, as everyone's aware, it's a little bit of a gamble. You know, a cheap, high-mileage old Range Rover, but if it does behave and it seems to be mechanically good, we're going to make it cosmetically nice as well and fix all of that, fix any paint imperfections, and make it look really nice. Because if you don't look at that damage, I mean, let's look from this side... It looks like a really nice old Range Rover, I think. You know, if you have some nice wheels on it, or, you know, the wheels are a nice model. I really like them. They're nice 20 inch wheels, but if you have them in good shape, the car has, you know, fresh wax on it, it will look really, really nice. So, one other thing that a lot of people picked up on the first video are the taillights, that they're not the same. I've understood that the right one is the correct taillight for a supercharged one, and the left one is not. So we see if we can find that. I mean, it's not a big deal right now. I've also noticed that this is a little bit loose, so I'm gonna see if I can do something about that. Probably happen when all of this happened as well. So see if I can do something about that or if I have to get some used taillights. Otherwise, everything else here in the back seems to be fine. Uh, no issues, except I noticed that the uh, wiper blade over here uh, is, uh, we need a new wiper blade, but that's just normal maintenance stuff, and the camera here doesn't work, which apparently is common as well. So when you put it in reverse, you just get a black image on the screen. So that's something to investigate as well, but not something that's really that important. Then on this side, there is, you know, really the only rust on the vehicle, starting a little bit right here where it seems to start on all of them. And it's the only rust I've really found on the car. So that will have to be sorted at the same time as the other side. And probably, you know, this will have to be probably painted as well. I don't really see it as that big of a deal, but definitely it will make the car look a lot nicer if there is no rust. Especially when there's no rust on the rest of the car and the rest of the paint looks really nice. Fixing that will really bring up the car. Moving back to the front, we have, you know, pretty classic with a car with a lot of miles on it is the faded headlights. And on this side as well, also has some condensation in it. So I'm going to see if there's an inspection cover or something that's not on there correctly, an O-ring or something, or if I can get the condensation out of it. Otherwise, maybe we'll have to look for a, a used headlight for this car. On this side as well, there's a weird thing that's happened in here. Not really sure what's been going on in there. So um, I'm gonna see if I can source some used lights. If not, or I have no idea what the lights would cost for this car. Otherwise, I'm just gonna polish them up, make them look as nice as I can, try and get rid of that condensation. There is a crack in the fog light lens up here, so I'm looking for one of those as well. The other side is completely fine, nothing wrong with that. Otherwise up front, you know, some stone chip marks here around the trim, which I just noticed is a little bit loose. So I'm going to see if, how that's supposed to be held in place. And yeah, just, you know, a number plate holder that is a little bit crooked. Moving on to the inside, here is where it gets really good. This interior is in excellent, excellent shape. There are no rips or tears. Nothing that I can find at the moment is broken. Every single electrical thing seems to work. Uh, steering, tilt, wheel, everything, uh, electric seats, heated seats, everything works. Even the old navigation system seems to work. I'm not going to turn it on because I don't want to show my current location, but we can turn it on when we're somewhere away from the house in a future video. 
can't really turn on the stereo either because it will just pick up a Christmas song. It's December and YouTube is not going to like that. So, uh, but just trust me, everything works. There are no dead pixels, anything like that. No error messages anywhere on the dash, which is just completely mind boggling. I mean, that's one of the reasons we got the car as well. You know, 15 year old Range Rover with no error messages on the dash at the moment, even though it has high miles, I think that is that is worth it. So let's just step inside a little bit and have a look. You know, everything looks pretty, pretty normal. We saw a lot of this in the last video, but you know, this is just really not bad for wear and tear for 175,000 miles. All the floor mats are there and everything. It just needs a really nice clean inside. Um, yeah, have a look back here. Headliner's in great shape. Sunroof, everything like that. Seems to work as it should. We just have some classic, you know, wear around here, which I've heard is very common. And all these switches down here. Other than that, it just really, really needs a detail. But the great thing is that everything in here actually seems to work. So, actually not that much seems to be wrong with this old Range Rover so far. Let's have a quick look back here as well. So, all these latches are electric. They all work. The uh, struts here holds the top of the tailgate up, no problems at all. I'm guessing this thing is really heavy. The button here, front locking, works as well. These are in good shape as well. Check that I've heard that they can rust, so there's no rust on them. I'm not really sure about that, but I saw that on a Harry's Garage video on these cars that they can. So I checked that when I got the car. And in here, it's pretty nice. It's not really that worn out or anything. There is some dog hair a little bit, so dog has been back here. It also smells a little bit of dogs. That's something that we are going to address, you know, vacuum all that out, shampoo all the interior back here and vacuum that up and it should look really nice as well. A thick sort of cover back here, rubber mat, looks nice underneath. And then you have a cargo cover up here as well, which all works and it's in pretty decent shape. Of course, it does have some fingerprints, but I mean, it's, it's off white or beige. It's going to get dirty, but it's probably cleaned up and it's in not that bad shape the uh, cargo net is there as well that has been chewed on that little thing right there by something I think but overall there's nothing else really broken back here and thankfully whatever chewed on that has not chewed on anything else back here so we'll close this up and we'll have a look under the bonnet under here is where most of the work will be done initially this will be my wife's daily driver, so it has to be reliable. It's also going to be our family car. So uh, some of you guys may be laughing at the screen, you know, old Range Rover, reliable. But I don't think it's going to be that bad. I mean, this car would not have that many miles on it if it was an unreliable vehicle. As far as I'm aware, it just went to get a service once a year, most of its life, you know. It's pretty much the same month. Every single year it went to um, the Land Rover dealer, got a service. Then it got inspected and passed inspection, and then it came back next year. So it seems to have been a reliable vehicle for the previous owners. And these old um, Jaguar V8s are pretty reliable as well, especially these years. They do seem to run on and on and on. I have some friends with XJRs, which have a lot more miles on it than this one. And the engine, it pulls like a new engine. And this one, it sounds great and all of that. However, if you remember from the last video, we're not going to start it up now. But it does have a belt squeal, so I'm going to investigate which one of the tensioners is bad. we we'll replace that, put a new belt on it. We'll get an oil service because it's been sitting for about a year. So uh, we're going to do a oil filter service, of course. We'll do the air filter. We're not going to do spark plugs right now. We'll do that a little bit further along. But we're just going to do a little bit of a quick service now to... Uh, Get, we'll get my wife behind the wheel. She's eager to drive the car. One other thing is I've ordered a new thermostat as well. It's a whole thermostat housing for this car. So we'll replace the coolant, put a new thermostat in it because it doesn't get up completely to temperature. And uh, that is really important. And you just need to run at the correct temperature for uh, you know optimal efficiency. And also you want good heat in the car as well. So that's going to be, be what I do under here right now. Uh, of course, there will be other maintenance items coming up. After that, we'll do brake fluid, power steering fluid. I'm also going to service the transmission. Um, 
pretty much right away as soon as I get the filter. I've ordered it, I've ordered fluid, so we're gonna do that as well. And then I'm also gonna do, uh, you know, transfer case and all those other things as well. So uh, there will be a lot of service things done to this car. So I'm out on a little bit of a longer test drive now just to get a feel for the car. I have ordered a bunch of service items that I think I will need. Uh, the transmission is one of those. It shifts really great when it's warm. However, the first sort of shift of the day, it's a little bit clunky. So um, we're gonna do a transmission service, uh, you know, the filter, the pan and all of that. And hopefully that will help it. Because once it's done that first shift of the day, it is, it is really rather smooth. But I thought that pulling on the main road here, I thought I'd, I'm not gonna you know, rub it that high, but I thought you guys could hear it a little bit. shifts fine I mean yeah we're already at the speed limit here it's it's a pretty quick car and it sounds it sounds absolutely lovely uh, other than that like I said we're going to the Lyman shop next week it's uh, the steering wheel is not completely straight it has some uneven tire wear looking for new tires I'll actually see if I can get another set of wheels for it because uh, where I live you do have separate summer and winter tires um, all seasons many of the all seasons available for this car actually don't really count as winter tires here. So if you get stopped or if you're in a traffic accident due to ice, they don't actually count as proper winter tires and then you're at fault for the accident even though it would not be your fault. All right, we'll do another little acceleration here. And that shifts really nicely at 3000 RPMs. Just taking it kind of easy because we're gonna do an oil change and all of that. But so far everything seems to be going well. One thing we did notice during the test drive was that what came out and it smelled a little hot around the back, around one of the rear brakes. And um, I talked to the guy about it, he had not noticed that at all before and he had just driven it uh, quite a long trip actually, about um, 600 kilometers or so a couple weeks earlier and that had not happened. So we drove it really carefully home and I was you know, prepared to pull over, but uh, we pulled over after about 15 minutes to a gas station to fill up on some gas and there were um, no issues at all. It wasn't hot. So we continued driving at home, no issues. So I'm wondering if it might have been the parking brake because that maybe the previous owner did not really use the parking brake that much because you know, it was an automatic car. And of course, you know, I tried everything to pull the parking brake and things when, uh, uh, when we got it. So maybe, um, parking brake is frozen on sometimes in the rear so when we come back from this little test drive I'm gonna see if that um, right rear is hot if it is uh, of course we'll have to have a look if it's the brake or the parking brake but other than that uh, everything feels like it should be fine just got back from that little test drive and this is the other side and I mean I can touch everything no issues at all let's see on the side where yeah, it's, it's pretty warm on this side, so something is definitely stuck here. We'll have to pull this wheel off and see if we can find out what it is. And that's it for this episode. And I'm willing to bet that the car is probably a little bit better than what you thought it would be when you saw the first video, seeing that it's a you know, used 15-year-old high mileage Range Rover. They usually have a lot more issues than what this one has. I don't think it's that bad at all. I mean, there's the normal maintenance items up front, and I mean, that's not really issues that's just doing maintenance you know oil change needs some new thermostat uh coolant we're gonna do it at the same time so that's what i'm gonna do really uh in the next couple days i've ordered all the parts for that so it's gonna be an oil change uh like we mentioned there's gonna be a new thermostat coolant i'm also gonna have to have a look at that rear brake pretty much right away i'm gonna um, the next couple of days have a look at that see if i can find out what the issue is seeing if it's just something that has to be you know fixed or lubricated or if i have to get some new parts Hopefully the parts are easy to get for the rear brakes on this car um, locally because I think it's on a lot of uh, other Land Rover vehicles use that same rear brake. That's at least what I'm heard, but I'm going to have to do a little bit more research on that. Other than that, uh, I'm going to have to do a transmission service as well before my wife starts using this as a daily driver. Even though um, once it's done that first sort of shift of the day, it's it's fine. So it's the first time you shift it up, it's fine uh, between first and second, so it's second and third and third and fourth you get sort of a hard shift but it shifts nicely i mean it it doesn't it doesn't hesitate or anything it shifts into gear it's just a little bit of a hard shift and then after it's done that it shifts really smoothly you don't even notice when it shifts after that so i'm hoping that 
uh, or think that it's probably just in, in need of a transmission service. These are, you know, sealed for life uh, transmissions, but they really should be serviced. So I will do um, change out the fluid and it put in a new filter. It comes with a, a, a pan with a pan gasket filter, replace all that. And I've heard um, from people changing fluid in these transmissions that it does make a huge difference. You can have a sort of a rush, rough shifting car and after doing that, it will feel like a new car. So depending on what the fluid looks like when it comes out, maybe uh, after another couple months or so, we'll um, change out some of the fluid again. But if it doesn't look that bad when it comes out and there's a big difference afterwards, then we'll just leave it alone for a little bit. Then there are of course future service items that we'll do to the car as well. We'll have to do, um, you know fluids everywhere really so we'll do you know brake fluid power steering fluid um the diffs transfer case just do everything and every filter on the car as well just to sort of bring it back to um um there's this cool expression at least i use a lot in, in the volvo world back when i uh, had my volvo v70 they say that you um you bring it back to stage zero so basically you do everything on the car so it you do every filter every fluid everything so it's back to stage zero how it was when it was a new car i mean it's not going to be a new car but basically you restart the service book and then you follow all the service items from basically mile zero because you've replaced everything on the car so that's probably what we're going to do on this one and it should hopefully be a nice reliable car but let me know in the comments down below what you think of this old range rover i think it's a really great car and i think the inside is going to clean up really nice as well that's something that we might do this weekend uh my wife and i because i think it'd be good to be two people to clean this thing out it's a lot of spaces and i think it will just be a lot nicer when it's clean down here by the gear selector and all of that but of course it's going to be used as a family car it's going to get dirty again and you know that's the real point you get dirty you clean it again but i think it's going to be make a huge difference just to do a really big clean of the inside as well because the outside turned out pretty nice after just a simple wash nothing else just a wash and the paint doesn't really look bad at all for my uh, my old subscribers who are waiting on some jaguar content don't worry it's coming really soon i am working on some things in the background of course still working on the xj40 got a little bit stuck on that oxygen sensor so part of the exhaust has to come off so i just got all the parts together for that so um that's all coming off i'm also um don't worry i will be doing the uh decorative stainless around the rear window of the xj6 i've just been uh just some other things have come up so i need to finish that video as well but that's coming up really soon as well and also on saturday will be part one of my christmas special and i'm gonna announce a little bit about that in the next couple days but um it's going to be something a little bit different it's not strictly strictly related to cars but i think you guys are really going to enjoy it and there is a jaguar connection to it or at least a coventry connection so uh i think you guys should be uh should really like that and it's going to go live here on a saturday afternoon central european time anyways if you like this video please give it a thumbs up leave a comment down below and share it with your friends if you're not already subscribed please do subscribe to the channel it really does help out a lot and until next time, I'm Adam, and this was Live My Classic. I'll see you soon.